happy lunar eclipse in Pisces. Oh my goodness, this is such huge, huge energy we're having tonight. It's a super moon. It's the full moon. It's the lunar eclipse. It's, it's big, big energy. So let's talk about it. Uh, when I, you know, as an astrologist, when I'm looking at things like this in the ether, I try to keep it simple and break it down first to, okay, the major energy here is Pisces. So what can I use about my knowledge about Pisces to apply all of this to me and make it personal to me and make it make sense to me and give me something that I can action on to feel like I'm really capitalizing on these energies. So let's just talk about Pisces for a second. Pisces is the final sign of the Zodiac. And as the final sign of the Zodiac, uh, Pisces tends to carry a little bit of every other sign with it. So it it's just like the final piece that just brings together all of the energies. And because of this, people who have Pisces placement are typically really good at connecting with other people. Even new people they've, you know, just met, they tend to just get along with them well, find points in common with them very easily because they see themselves in everyone they meet, which is a, you know, really nice quality. Um, Pisces can be a little bit all over the place emotionally, uh, can be, you know, has big emotions. My second um, born has his moon in Pisces and he tends to be, you know, 100% all of the time. Whatever he feels, he's feeling it to the max, whether that's sadness or happiness or anger or frustration. And it's just all that energy. Pisces just feel everything so intensely. Um, but Pisces is also a sign of the zodiac that is very intuitively connected, very connected to the cosmos, very much looking up at the stars and the universe and the vastness of it all. And, um, and Pisces really encourages us to tap into our spirituality and kind of our wonderment of the universe. You know, looking up at a sky full of stars and just feeling so beautifully small in all of it and connecting to the, the part of us that's so deep in our core that does feel that connection to the higher realms. And so when we are in this lunar eclipse energy, which a lunar uh, you know eclipse is basically a supercharged full moon, and not only is this a full moon, it's a super moon, meaning um, the moon appears to be bigger in the sky than normal. The draw of the moon, you know, that it pulls on us seems to be even more than usual. The energy is just bigger. There's so much, so much beautiful energy going on with this, um, is that it is, it's like the universe just begging us to explore it and to connect with it and to feel encouraged and energized and supported by it. And the thing about, you know, when you look at the different zodiac signs, there's 12 signs that are in six pairs. So the sign that is paired with Pisces is Virgo. And so when we look at these pairs, they tend to be opposites. Um, they do have some similarities, but it tends to be, you know, an axis where you're kind of going from one extreme to the other extreme. And so this axis of Virgo to Pisces energy is that Virgo tends to be the perfectionist and Pisces tends to be the dreamer. And it's a little bit of practicality versus spirituality. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, keeping your feet on the floor versus letting your spirit soar, right? And um, so when we're in this particular energy where the emphasis is on the Pisces and it's the emphasis is on the highest vibration of that sign because every sign is a spectrum. Every sign has the more positive aspects and the more shadow side aspects. 
right? But when we're in this particular energy, we are being asked to try to align to the highest aspects of that sign. So we're being asked to try to build that spiritual connection, build that that sense of beauty with the that the universe is beautiful and that it loves us and that it's caring for us and one of the things this is this is something I'm extra passionate about personally because my south node is in Virgo and my north node is in Pisces and so I came into this world in order to learn how to move away from this kind of very structured perfectionistic tendency and really learn how to embrace the surrender and trust and spirituality that Pisces calls to us to lean into. So some ways that you can practically lean into this while these energies are very high and very present would be to uh, maybe explore a spiritual practice that you've never tried before. You know, maybe you've never tried to meditate. This might be a good day to, you know, give that a, a try for the first time or you know, maybe you, you've never, I like to meditate while listening to Aum chanting. You can just look that up on YouTube and it'll, you'll get a million things to, um, to listen to. Um, but I find that that really takes my meditation into another realm. I really like that. Um, if you're someone who's never really explored tarot cards or astrology, uh, this is a great day for just, you know, trying something new or looking up something you've never looked up before, or asking a question about something. Feel free to ask me questions in the comments about any of this stuff. Astrology and tarot are, um, you know, they both have my heart. And so that's where I'm going to be able to answer your questions best. So feel free. Um, or you can, you know, just get back into a spiritual practice that maybe you used to be into a lot and you've, you know, for one reason or the other, just not done it in a while. And, you know, maybe you, um, maybe there's a certain form of yoga flow that you find to be personally a very spiritual practice. You haven't done it in a while. Do it right now. That would be, that would be a great way to do that. Um, or just generally journaling about your, you know, life and the universe and seeing what you can do to move away from the, f the feeling of like, I have to control everything. I have to control these outcomes. I have to know what's going to happen. I have to make this happen. Maybe it's something you're, you're really trying to um, manifest in your life. That, that tension and that contraction and that need for control is the, the shadow aspect of Virgo. And so this lunar eclipse is asking you, can you just deeply and completely and beautifully surrender into trust that it's all going to work out exactly the way it's supposed to for your highest good? Um, let's do a quick draw and see what cards we get um, to help us uh, further celebrate this lunar eclipse. All right. Oh, come on. Are you serious? We've got the death card, which this is the light seers tarot. And so this is death and rebirth. A hundred percent. Yes. Okay. We've got the three of pentacles, which is about getting back down to a plan. Let's, let's interpret these cards in just one second. What's the last one here? And the devil. Okay. What a beautiful set of cards for this lunar eclipse in Pisces. So this is about sweeping away everything that it's death coming in to like burn down everything that doesn't work anymore and sweep it away and make room for the new. And what a beautiful, oh, that's so beautiful, you know, with this Pisces energy of just trusting that if it is not meant for you, you need to let it go and surrender and trust that what's meant for you is coming. Now this three of pentacles is interesting because it is about making plans, um, which would be a little bit more of a Virgo energy, right? But it's getting back down to what does work. So getting rid of what doesn't and trying to scale it all the way back to the simple things that you do know work for you 
And the devil card is, again, asking us to let go of those things that are holding us back, whether it's anxiety or overwhelm, whether it's a bad habit, whether it's a person that is just so toxic in our life, but they, we feel like they have so much control over us, and to let that go. I hope this message uh, helps you on your journey today, and I'll see you later.